Welcome back to the Morristown Market Report. I'm Amy Schrader with Remax Real Estate 10. And I'm Kim Swan with Union Home Mortgage. Our special guest today is Amy Gwynn. She is the owner of Lakeway Title here in Morristown. Welcome, Amy. Thank you for coming. Thank you all for asking me. So what exactly does a title company do in a real estate transaction? Well, we're kind of the last step. You all do all the hard work and we come in at the end. Um, we do the title work on the property. And um, what does that mean? That's when we have the attorney or abstractor go to the courthouse in the county where the property is. And um, he searches back normally 30 years to make sure we catch all the deeds of trust, unpaid taxes, liens, any type of thing that would affect the title to the property. After we get that finished, then we move toward closing either with the lender or cash deal. Okay. So what do you send to the lender to let them know, like, hey, this is kind of what's going on? Um, we try, I'm going to put that in there, to keep them updated if there's a title issue, if there's a holdup on our part. We send them our preliminary CD. We send them a commitment, which is going to list everything we're going to need to be done prior to closing um, to make sure they're okay with it and um, just let them know we're ready on our end when they're ready on their end. Okay. Now a question I get a lot from people is, do I have to have a survey when I sell my house or when I sell my piece of property? Or So when does the survey come into play? When do people have to get a survey done? Um, if it's um, acreage that there's been portions taken off of, like if you deeded your uncle and your aunt and different things, an acre, two acres. If there's been more than three out conveyances on acreage, then we're going to need a survey to make sure what we have left. Um, if it has a good legal description and there are no out conveyances, then the attorney's not going to ask for one. If it's a vague description from a rock to a tree to a fence post, <laughs> They're probably going to ask that you have a survey. Okay. I know I had, and this was early on in my career, um, I had like 80 cent makers up in Hancock County, which you know how that can be. Um, and le the legal description of this property was literally four lines. And it said, this farm is bordered to the north by the Smith Farm, to the west by the Jones Farm, to the south by the who I mean that was literally the legal description of this property. There was no meets and bounds and it said, you know, it is a more or less eighty eight acres or whatever it was. And so obviously we had to get a survey done on that, which was kind of expensive. Um, um because of all the work involved and getting yes. legal descriptions. And I think what people are running into right now is the surveyors are extremely busy. And nobody wants to do 80 acres in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so um, we've had people say it's six to nine months to even get somebody to come look at the property. Wow. So it, it is an issue. Yeah, it is. All right. So um, once you go to closing, um, I know we go to the title company to have the closing. What do you all do? Like, what's that process involved? We get all the figures from the lender, the payoffs, anything like that, the commission from you all. And we compile all those figures for the buyers and for the sellers and do all the paperwork. We get the paperwork from the lender. If it's a cash deal, then there's not much paperwork. And we have people come and sign. Um, since COVID and moving forward, we have a lot of people that like to do remote, remote closings. They don't want to come to closing or they're unable to come to closing. So we have, um, if it's within driving distance, we have some notaries that will go to them. We can email documents, we can overnight documents. And then there's some standards that we like to get to make sure we're getting the signatures we need. And I know again, one thing that I get from a lot of sellers is, well, can't we just e-sign everything? And I, you know, I have to explain to them, a lot of the documents can be e-signed, but the warranty deed requires 
the wet signature. Yes. And that is primarily because, well, it's for their protection as well as ours. Um, when you go to record a document, it has to be either a certified copy of an original or an original. They're not going to record it otherwise. And um, if it's a wet signature and it's been notarized, then you know that those people have actually looked at the document, they've signed the document, they meant to sell or buy what they did. So it's um, kind of an extra layer of protection for title insurance and everybody involved. And to kind of expand on that, when you get something notarized, the notary is going to ask for a copy of a photo, a photo ID. ID. A valid so that photo way ID. we know that whoever signed this document, they had identification that matched yes. the name that's on this paperwork. So, And most recently, there's been some scams where oh, yeah. <laughs> there's um, bad notaries, um, bad sellers, so we're and even bad buyers. So that doesn't get you know, those are usually cut off when you don't actually you're not able to produce the funds. But we're we've had to like add some extra layers in there just to make sure that we're doing everything we can to make sure a piece of product doesn't get sold that wasn't meant to. So. Um, and title insurance companies are helping with that, um, like the underwriters. But that's still a, a huge problem right now. Yeah, I've actually had two different requests um, recently. And, like, I sell a lot of land, so I'm the prime agent for these people to, hey, let's list. And it's like I told the broker here, like, 10 years ago, you know, I never met half the people that I sold property for. Probably more than that, probably like 75%. Somebody call me and they'd be like, hey, I own this lot over in Cherokee Estates. Can you sell it for me? And I'd take their name. And of course, you know, you're matching the name to the tax card and you're emailing stuff and it comes back. And like, I never met these people. You're just assuming that everybody is who they say they are. So with these scams that are coming around now, um, we have an app called Forewarn that we have access to through our MLS. And so I've gotten two different requests that come through Zillow. And it's like, hey, I own a lot in this subdivision. Um, please text me as soon as you can to discuss this. And so whatever number they put in there, I always go into forewarn and check that number and see does it match the person that's on file for it. Both times it's come back number unknown, which usually means it's one of those um, voice activated numbers or whatever like a google voice number or something like that so i don't even bother texting them half the time you know i'll reply to whatever email address they've provided the last one that came through i actually had sold the lot to the guy i just knocked your glasses off i'm so sorry um i had actually sold the lot to the guy so i'd had his phone number and i reached out and i'm like hey you know, are you looking to sell your lot? I just got this request from Zillow. He was totally freaked out by it. So, oh, wow. yeah, there's a lot of things you have to try and double check everybody now. And it seems like um, it, because the, the criminals are one step ahead of mm -hmm. the security. And so that has to happen before you know how to come in and solve it the next time. And that's unfortunate for the first time. First person. Yes. Yeah. And it always takes somebody actually getting the lot sold that it didn't belong to before everybody steps back and says, oh my gosh, how did this even happen? But it's just the world we live in, I guess. So probably the most important thing that takes place at closing from the title company perspective is you all offer people owner's title insurance. Yes. Yes. And most people have no clue what owner's title insurance is. So why don't you give everybody a brief explanation of what that is and why it is so important. Okay. We'll just go back to what we just <laughs> talked about. If you are a buyer on a piece of property, it, now if, if you have a lender, the lender is going to require title insurance. But a lender's type policy goes down as the mortgage is paid. An owner's policy stays at this amount that you purchased it. 
and you, you can't make money on owner's title insurance, but it makes you whole if you had a complete loss on a piece of property. So what they're going to um, look at is make sure all the issues are cleared that the attorneys found. The attorneys aren't gonna find everything. If we've got the wrong seller, it's impersonator, they're not gonna find that. They're not gonna find that at all because that's not back here to look at. If you buy title insurance, title insurance will make you whole if you have a cash deal, it goes through and then we find out, oh wait, that seller was an impersonator. It wasn't actually John Doe. Okay, it was someone else. So that's the, title insurance is just an extra layer of protection, just like any other insurance, you know. But in saying that, you can't buy homeowner's insurance after the house is on fire. <laughs> you can't sure. buy owner's exactly. title insurance after there's an issue. So that's something that you've got to do. We say you have 30 days, you know, because that's until your title opinion would become old. So, but it's really something that um, they need to check and be informed at closing, before closing, or shortly thereafter so you can make sure you get it in place. But if you look at the big picture, it's a one-time premium. It's going to be good for as long as you and your heirs own the property. And it covers you for just about everything. So you don't, with the way the world is today, you it's just an added layer of protection for you and your money. And to go back and expand, when you're talking about the lender is going to have title insurance, that's just to protect the lender. Yes. So yes. you would be out, basically. Yes. Yes. In that situation. So, you know, we always tell people, like she said, it's a one-time policy, mm -hmm. um, a one-time premium. And like any other insurance, I would rather have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Exactly. You know? So that's definitely something important. Most of the time, your realtor, your lender, or somebody is going to talk to you about title insurance before you actually get to closing. When you buy it at the same time that the lender's title insurance policy comes out, you're going to get a little bit of a discount on that premium than if you were not yes. buying it. Yes, we do them. those with the simultaneous issue. And in that the lender's requiring it, it's beneficial if you go ahead and get your owners at that time because it's much cheaper. And it's not a very expensive thing. No. Um, obviously, it's depending on the purchase price of the property. The more expensive a property, the more expensive the premium is going to be. But, like, if it's a $50,000 lot, it's, like, negligible. Yes. I mean, really. Yes. So, definitely, owner's title insurance is something you need to know about and think about and get anytime you buy a piece of property. Anything else about the title process that you want to share with us? No. <laughs> no, it's, it, and I will say that working with experienced agents and lenders um, really makes our job easier. So thank you all well, for thank what you. you do. We say the same thing about you. So. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you're welcome. Whenever you go to a lender, you know, they're going to throw some random title company fees in there. But as the buyer, you absolutely have the right to shop around check title company fees and use the company that you're familiar with. Don't let a lender, don't let the realtor push you into buying somebody that you're not comfortable using. So we like Lakeway Title. I try to use them as much as I can. Um, they're probably one of the oldest title companies here in Morristown. We are the oldest title company in Morristown. So yeah. it's, that's not my age, but yeah, we are. So. <laughs> they were around before she was. <laughs> So yeah, right. we, we like to make people feel comfortable um, because as a buyer, we're dipping into your pocket. And as a seller, we have your money. So the more comfortable you feel with us, the easier it's going to go for everybody involved. So, All right. Good deal. Right. Well, you are welcome to get back to it. I know you're approaching the end of the month, so you're yes. probably a little busy over there. Yes. Kim and I are going to keep talking for just a few minutes about mortgages and real estate. So you Thank hear you enough all. about that, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate Thank you coming. You. Thank you.
Sorry about knocking your glasses off. So. It's okay. They magically disappeared back on my lap. You know, I like to use my hands when I talk. <laughs> I don't know how to talk without them. But. So what's going on in the mortgage world? Well, we, we're approaching end of the month, too, so it's a busy week next week. Um, rates are still moving up a little bit more. Um, THDA went up this afternoon to 6.65, 6.125 if you're the home for heroes type thing. Um, just truly no projections. I, I you know, I, I hate to even so say. So why did they, what, have you heard, <laughs> like, why the interest rates kind of shot up towards the end of last week? I think there was, was there an unemployment report or there was something that came out? And there's so many reports, you know, inflation reports and domestic goods and durable products and all that stuff. And anyway, so that was something. And then there may be some reports coming out this week, unemployment. I don't know what else coming out. But that's supposedly why they're increasing. So. Okay. Well, and I mean, I think it's just kind of a knee-jerk reaction. Um, Long term, I think we're probably still fine. You know, I've not heard anybody retract and say, you know, oh, yeah, interest rates are going to get back up to 8% and, you know, this, that, and the other. I still think they're going to end up coming down, especially the closer to, like, June and July we get. I think we're going to start seeing them yeah. come back down. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. But I'm not the expert, so I don't know. I don't know that the experts are experts anymore. <laughs> Well, you know, you can shake your crystal eight ball and see what happens. You can. <laughs> All right, just to give you a little bit of an update on what's going on in Hamlin County in real estate from February 1st until now, we have had 40 new listings that have come on the market, um, which is pretty good. I mean, to be three weeks into February and we've got 40 new listings, 15 of those are already under contract. We've had a total of 54 homes that have already went under contract in the month of February, and we've already had 34 homes that have closed. Our average sales price right now is running around 279,000 with 48 days on the market, and the median sales price is around 288.4 with eight days on the market. So, if you listen to us, you know that I always preach. If you price your home correctly, you get it ready to go on the market, and you use professional photographs, you're not going to be sitting on the market for a long time. So, you know, eight days median on the market means within about a week, these homes are going under contract. That means we're still in a seller's market here in Hamlin County. If we took out the new construction homes that DR Horton is putting up, we would have probably about 40 to 50 homes available for resale here in Hamlin County, which for a county of our size, that's not a lot of inventory. <laughs> so just be aware of that. Um, you know, people keep saying, oh, you know, these prices are going to come down. They're, they're going to come down. We're going to have another crash. As long as the demand is out there and as long as inventory is as tight as it is right now, we're not going to have a crash. We're not going to see a decline in home sale prices around here. So Keep that in mind. If you're waiting on the crash, you're going to end up paying more because you're going to keep waiting until the prices go up even more. Um, so far, we've had about 20 price changes this month. The average was $37,000 for a price change. Um, with 86 days on the market, the median was 15,500 with 22 days, I'm sorry, 72 days on the market. So, if you don't price your home properly when you put it on the market, you're going to end up doing significant price changes and you're going to spend more time on the market than you should. So that's why you want to talk to your realtor maybe, you know, one or two months before you're ready to list so that you can find out what you need to do to get your home ready to sell and to make sure that you're going to be pricing it where you need to be. So while we're still in a really good market, we are not in the unicorn years anymore. So you can't just throw a price on there and hope that somebody bites. You've really got to be reasonable when you price your home so that you will get it under contract fairly quickly. So that's kind of what we're doing in Hamlin County right now. Not bad those numbers, really. New listings keep going up. The spring, spring, the spring market, I think it's this pretty weather we've been having the past couple of weeks, the warm temperatures and stuff. Um, you know... Interest rates have kind of kind of settled. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we're right. not seeing like 8% anymore. So no. I think people are like, okay, this is kind of our reality, which, mm -hmm. you know, we can't determine the interest rates. We just kind of have to make the best of it and move forward. 
So, there was a Golden Girls episode. Terry had told us about it. Um, wow. You know, and Blanche had made the comment that you couldn't blast me out of this house with a 7% interest rate, you know. So, at one point, 7% was considered a really great interest rate. We got spoiled having three and a half, four percent interest rates for a very long time, which, you know, I don't know why they kept them that low as long as they did, but six, seven, eight percent is really more of a realistic number, I think, yes. for interest rates. So there you have it. All right. We will be back next week. If you have a local business that you would like to have highlighted on our show, we would love to have you. Please send us a DM or leave a comment below and we'll get you on our schedule. Again, I'm Amy Schrader with Remax Real Estate 10. And I'm Kim Swan with Union Home Mortgage.